Hello, this is a uh, exercise that I decided to leave in. This exercise is called LBO Exercise with Pro Forma. It's one of these things that I used to do where I make an effort to put the uh, uh, user forms in here, and I guess you can save this as some kind of, I forgot, PNG file or something like that, and import it back into this. Okay, now this, so again, this one you can clear the uh, inputs and compute the things, and here's how it works. We have some inputs. We have how much for consideration we're going to pay, what the exit multiple is, and I guess we're going to use some cash of the target for some reason to uh, pay for the transaction. We'll have some write-ups, so we'll have some goodwill analysis in here. We'll put some new senior debt in, six years interest rate. We'll have some uh, operating uh, inputs for Eddie Daw, CapEx, working capital 10% of the Eddie Daw, and then we've got some, uh, looks like we've even got some taxes and some depreciation. Uh, uh, Okay, and let's, uh oh, let's try to fill in the blanks. Looks like I left a, a couple that went down, which is okay. Okay, so um, the first thing is to let, let's get the transaction together. Let's put the current Abby dog in here. Um, and put the debt issued, which was, there's the amount of debt issued, so the uh, equity consideration, did I put the equity consideration up here? This is consideration for equity of existing company. Okay, and we can put less than that debt. Okay, and EV to AB dot for our transaction is this. I suppose EV to AB dot. Why don't we call that? Transaction multiple. And we can get the debt to every dollar here. Okay. And then we can go through the sources and uses of funds, which let's start with how much we're actually paying for the equity here. And let's say I don't. No, but let's just say, let's say we have to repay all the retiring debt, which could be an expensive negative synergy for us. And we're going to get, we're going to use the cash they have on the match to pay for the transaction, so that's going to reduce the amount. This could be like a sale of an asset, I suppose, be a better way kind of do it then that's our debt were issued. So the equity is the total minus the cash we're using of the company minus this. And we can have our sources equal our uses. Right? Then let's do the uh, uh, goodwill analysis. We start with the consideration. Let's take away the, the existing Book value of the company. Okay, and um, we can say, well, if there's a plant right up, we need less goodwill. And I hope we put some plant right up here. And then we also had some 
dead or right up. Uh, just a minute. Oh, I call things. Accounts receivable here. Okay, I'm going to be up and it's okay. So, is the dead a right up or a right up or a right down? Okay, that will have the same effect, really. Um, I suppose we can put these, uh, why don't we uh, violate the positive number convention and put these in as negatives. And you remember, if you want to use the alt or equal, here, you can press alt equal like that. Or you can press alt equal like that. Or you could press save this and then press alt. I don't know why it works like that, but it works. Okay. Now, um, for some reason, I suppose I deleted some of these and not others. Now, I absolutely okay, here. Well, then I can't just receive more. I'm going to go to debtors. That's nice. Uh, what do we put for our fixed assets? What happened to this? There's been a cumulative depreciation, I suppose. what I was thinking up here, but I'm going to leave that, uh, I'm going to leave that to be zero. Did we have any accumulated depreciation? Did I miss something? Okay. Uh, excuse me for wasting your time on that one. Now we can put our asset right up. So let's just, and again, here is the rule. The rule, the rule, the rule. This is you can get everything from either the, uh, the goodwill analysis or the sources and use of the funds. Everything can come from here. So I fill that in for you. And then we put a minus on the cash because we can take all the cash and just use the company's own cash to pay our, pay for our, uh, I don't know how that works. And then uh, I retired some debt, put some new debt here for some reason. I mean, put this in. We, we, removed, we removed the equity. I'm just making sure we took that from this line. And then the new equity we issue, we get from the sources and uses state. That's the that real equity we should not some consideration or anything else. So then we can sum all of the adjustments. Okay. And I, I guess I didn't put any fees in this. And look at what happened. So why uh, did this not uh, balance? I have made a mistake in the debtors. I'm sure you picked that up while you're watching the video. I make these mistakes on purpose just so to, to show that uh, you're awake. <laughs> okay, now uh, once we've got the pro forma balance sheet, I just collapsed it and then we can proceed through the rest of the model. The debt term is uh, that's debt tenor. rate again. Shift control right arrow control R. Okay. Uh, they put the uh, closing balance of the debt in straight from the, why don't we really use it straight from the balance sheet. Opening balances, closing balance. We have uh, uh, like, oh well. All right. If you wanted to take out Closing balance is the opening balance plus the new debt issues minus the repayments. The payments starting in this year. So it's okay. I think 
is that God divide that by the dead term. And I don't know if you remember from if you watched the other video, you really should make an adjustment for the shift control R, shift control right to R. Debt goes to zero, and let's take the opening balance and multiply that by the interest rate. What I was just about to say was that the uh, shift control. Oh, come on, what's going on? Oh, I just pressed my shift control R and it automatically came on. The the uh, uh, we should really have if if you had a holding period that's shorter, we should have a little option to pay off all the debt when you sell the, when you exit the company. Okay, and then let's put in, this really should have been, God, should have been uh, before. How could, how could I have done that? I mean, CapEx, we should have come before the, the debt, really. That's ridiculous. And then I said, well, let's take the EBITDA change, okay, and then let's, let's put the working capital as a percentage of the EBITDA in here, okay, and I'm not, you know, and then we can just, whoops, with that, just a okay, so clearly at least the working capital comes after the expenses. And then we can start with our working capital balance from, again, everything. It was that idea that I didn't finish. I to have not, uh, after the total adjustments, I seem to have not added the total adjustments to the base value. We have that we can put in a, start with a working capital that comes from the balance sheet. This is kind of the same general idea that you, in any corporate model, opening balance is equal to closing balance. We can do it like that. That's kind of good. Alt equal, shade, shift control R. Shift control R might not work if you put our terminal multiple in. Again, this could be very much more flexible. There's an exit. Okay. Multiply the exit multiple by uh, edit. Okay. Turn it across. It's really the depth, like I said before, should come from here. And I think this is really one of the ideas. We take the... Uh, opening balance of the fixed assets from our balance sheet. Now the closing balance is equal to the opening balance. We can then add in our capex and uh, uh, if you listen to my videos you hear me repeating myself on this but this is not really correct. Please, please, please look at the retirement exercises to see why this can be such a bad thing to do. Plus CapEx minus retirement. It really just is a killer of, of, of good models. Okay, of, well, of the, any, not the good models, but anyway, it's mean, putting on depreciation weight. Again, like, it hurts me to do this because we're, we're uh, and maybe we'll take the average of the open balance and the closing balance and multiply this. So really, again, repeating myself, you cannot, oh, come on, you can't take either the, the, the net depreciation or the gross depreciation. The only real value is, is to take the explicitly account for the retirement. So we're going to have to put in a cumulative depreciation, which is this one, plus the depreciation expense. Okay, and 
how much more do we have? Ugh. Okay, it's not so bad, I suppose. Not because the rest of it's really just filling in some blanks. I think I'll try to go quickly. Here's our heavy stop. There's a depreciation expense. There's a subtotal. Okay. Interest expense. We should have really been just below. I'm not sure what it means to have it. Well, the idea is we're not really splitting operations from uh, finance and then let's multiply this by the tax rate to get our only calculation and then go for the more statement and then take the difference. And that's our earnings. Do the same thing. Let's take our EBITDA. Work on capital changes now. Cash taxes, and taxes, minus this, minus this, and uh, I can put in our capex. Uh, here, put in our uh, guess I made a separate thing. And I'll put some stuff over here. I suppose we could put an asset purchase. Sources and uses statement. Come on. Uses of cash. This is a source of uses of cash. That's how much we spent for our uh, transaction. And we can put the proceeds from the sale. Okay. Make our subtotal is this minus the capex. Minus on the new transactions we did, we did plus this. Okay, and we can put in our, our senior debt. We can just get that from the, again. We're kind of putting that the sources and uses together here. So that's our senior debt purchase. And then we can put in our equity that we're uh, issuing. And the any cash used, I suppose we can put that in. Okay, um, I think we've got everything except the retirement account as well. This, but, for, but let's go back to our cash flow waterfall. So this is just this one. Add these, but they're going to always be blank for the next rooms. Okay, and then senior debt interest is just, we have it right here. And then the payment of the senior debt we have right here, but we also have to retire the next from the sources and uses. I never would do this anymore, by the way. It's just, for me, it's just totally cosmetic and kind of clutters up things. And then our net cash flow is just our cash flow, cash that we have for before the waterfall minus these two. And I'm just going to call it out our equity distributions as long as they're positive. And that's where you could have all sorts of cash traps and cash sweeps and blah blah blah. Okay. Control on on the cash flow to the equities. We put a minus sign on those equities put into the company. And we put a plus sign on the equity we take out, which is almost nothing except for the. Why are those turnover proceeds so small? Hang on, did I do something wrong with the terminal proceeds? Terminal proceeds should have been terminal multiple. What did I do? This was supposed to be eight times the the heavy Okay, that's a 
balance is right here. Oh, oh see? I'm putting it in the right place. Our fixed asset balance is right here. And I messed up our wonderful little uh, thing. And our goodwill is... Did we put a goodwill account in? So we just take our goodwill and press the F4. Okay. Yeah, so shift control R. Alt equal. Don't worry about the last one. And then we put our closing balance of our senior debt. And if the balance sheet doesn't balance, you see the idea now. I switch off the video and I come back and say, oh, it wasn't a hard balance. It's a lie sometimes. It shouldn't be. Some people tell me that, you know, what you should do with your balance sheet is just make it as you go across. See, you can see it doesn't work. It's a mistake. And that means I'm going to pause it. Okay, I forgot to put the accumulated appreciation as a negative, and now I have a lot of balances. And everything is just fine. And that took me a couple of minutes to find, it should have been much easier. And then we have our whole leveraged buyout kind of uh, model working with, including a uh, pro forma balance sheet. Okay. Whether you really needed to do a performance balance sheet or not, it was completely debatable. And if you said, ah, oh, that was crap, you didn't affect it. I don't know. 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 You have to make it look fancy and then look a little complicated. And then, um, of course, advertisements www.finance. Energy Institute.com for really wonderful classes at such low prices. Okay. 